Hi, my name is Bokhadar Ahmedov. In this video lecture, we are going to solve a maximization problem using derivatives. A farmer has 2,400 meters of fencing and wants to fence off a rectangular field. So how he has to choose the dimensions of this field in order to choose the, in order to choose the largest area. Well, what, what we mean is we can choose the height and the width of this rectangular field differently. If, for example, we choose the height to be equal to the 40, then the width has to be equal to the 160. So that the sum of all of the three sides is going to be equal to the 240, since the, the, the length of the fencing is limited. So the 40 meters plus 160 meters plus 40 meters is going to be equal to exactly 240 meters. And the area is going to be equal to the height times the width. So this is the area of the rectangular uh, it, it field. It's going to be 40 times to the 160, which is going to be equal to the 6,400 meters in the square. Well, well, the farmer can choose the dimensions of this field differently. He might choose the height to be equal to the 100 meters and the width to be equal to the 40 meters. So in this case, like this side, of the rectangular area is also going to be 100 and the, and the area is going to be found to be equal to 40 which is the width times to the 100 which is the height which is going to be equal to the 4000 meters in the square if you remember previously it was 6400 meters per, per, per square so you see so depending on how we are choosing the dimensions of this rectangular field, the area is going to be different, while the sum of the sides of this rectangular area are the same, always. Well, what we want is we would like to basically figure out the dimensions so in order to maximize this area. Let's first of all write down how we need to calculate the area. So the area is going to be the width of this rectangular field times to the height. So we have to maximize this. The problem is if we don't put any constraints on the top of the width or height, this area might go onto infinity. So it's made me infinitely large. We're going to put some constraints. So in our case, the constraint is given as the sum of all of the three sides, which is like h plus width plus h should be equal to the 240 meters. So this our constraint. We're going to find with the width from this equation, which is going to be 240 minus 2h, and we're going to simply substitute this to here. So in this case, the a now is going to depend only on h, and this is going to be equal to the h times the 240 minus 2h. So well, indeed, if, if you remember previously, we've chosen the h to be equal to the 40, and if we substitute the 40 to here, and to here, what we get is essentially 40 times 240 minus 80. So 240 minus 80 is 160, so it's going to be 40 times 160, which is going to be equal to the 6,400 meters in the square. Well, if we choose the height to be equal to the 100 meters, so A of 100, so what we need to do is we need to choose the H here and here to be equal to the 100. And if you substitute the 100 to there, it's going to be equal to the 240 minus 200, which is going to be equal to the 100 times the 40, which is equal to the 4,000 meters in the square. So what we got is we've got this function A, which depends on H using this, uh, this equation. And what we need to do is we need to maximize this function. Well, we are going to use the differentiation in order to find the maximum value of this, of this function. Well, what we need to do is we need to take a derivative of this function with respect to the h. And the derivative of this function is going to be 240 minus 4h. Well, what we need to do now is we need to find the critical points of this function. And the critical points are going to be the essentially three points. So one point is going to be on the border of this of this function. So the border is going to be essentially, um, so the borders are going to be in the, in, the, in the two different sides of this function. So it's going to be, um, so when h is equal to the, uh, when the h is equal to the 120, 
So it's going to be the right border. So or when the age is equal to the zero, it's going to be the left border. And the critical point, or when the when the derivative of this function is equal to the zero. So we if we equalize this to be equal to the zero, what we get is so I'm going to find h from here. So the h is going to be equal to the 240 divided to the 4, which is equal to the 60. So the third point which we need to check is this 60. Well, OK, so the, there are three critical points now. Critical points. So the maximum and the minimum points are going to be one of them. OK. So there are two different ways of identifying whether this point, for example, is the local maximum or local minimum. So the first way is to identify the increasing and decreasing regions. Well, we need to know that when the derivative of the function is positive, it means that the function itself is increasing. And analogously, when the derivative of this function is negative, it means that the function is decreasing. Well, we know that when h is equal to the 60, the a prime of h, right, which is equal to the 240 minus 4h, is going to have negative sign here and positive sign here. Right? We can quickly check by choosing any value from here. For example, if h is equal to the 80, and if you substitute the 80 to here, it's going to be 240 minus 4 times the 80, which is going to be a negative number. Right? Or you can choose one value from here, for example, 0. If you substitute 0, it's going to be a positive number. What does it mean that our curve is increasing up to this point and then start decreasing? It means that our function is reaching its maximum at the h is equal to the 60. So the h is equal to the 60 is a point when the function is reaching, uh, is the point when the function is reaching the maximum. Maximum point. Well, it is not a maximum value. So this is the first way how to identify the local maximum or local minimum. And, and it, there is another way. We can use the concavity of the function in order to identify the local maximum or local minimum. What does it mean, the concavity? Whether the function is looking like concave down or concave up, right? So the second derivative of the function or the sign of the second derivative is going to tell us whether the function is concave up or down at the particular point. We're checking again, so this point h is equal to the 60, right? So the first derivative of this function is equal to 240 minus 4h. And the second derivative of this function is equal to the minus 4, which is always negative. It means that our function is always concave down. And exactly at the h is equal to the 60, it's still concave down. So that's why it's reaching its maximum at this point. So this is the second way of identifying the local maximum or local minimum. So we denote this a, the argument of the maximum of the a of h is going to be equal to the 60. And if you would like to identify, so essentially, at which point the function is reaching the maximum. And if you would like to identify what is the maximum of the a of h, we need to evaluate a of 60, which is going to be equal to the 240 times. Uh, so let me take out the 240 times the z. Oh, let me take out the h from the brackets so that it's going to be easier for us to work with. Or we can take out actually 120. Oh, sorry. We can take out 2h out of the brackets. Uh, and what we have here is going to be 120 minus h. So if you substitute 60, it's going to be 2 times to the 60 times to the 120 minus 60. It's going to be 7,200 meters in the square. Well, the maximum area which we can get is going to be 60 to 7,200 meters in the square. And we can get this when the height of the rectangular area is going to be equal to the 60 meters. Well, if you look to this function, uh, we can see that this is the parabola, right? And what we know is this parabola is going to look 
down. So it can't go downward because the second derivative of this function is negative. At the same time, we know that this is can't go downward because of the sign of the value before the h in this word. Well, if you look to the graph of this function, we can see that the graph of the function is going to be similar to this one. Well, we, by choosing the different values for the h, for example, when we choose the h to be equal to the 0, so the a of h is going to be equal to the 0 as well, or when the h is equal to the 120, a of h is going to be equal to the 0 to here as well. So the minimum values of this function are at the borders of the interval for the h, and the maximum value is going to be reached on the vertex of this parabola where the h is exactly equal to the 60. Okay, so this is we can uh, this is how we can solve this problem using various different ways. So we can solve this problem by taking the derivative of the function and equalizing to the zero and doing some analysis on, on the top of this by identifying the increasing and decreasing regions. Or we can identify whether this is the maximum point or the minimum point by just checking the second derivative of this function, or we can find, figure out, uh, that this curve is a parabola, which is kind of get downward, and the, and the maximum point or the maximum value of this function is going to be reached at the vertex of this parabola. So this is how we're going to solve the optimization problems using the tools of calculus, and I hope that this video was helpful for you.